a swirling dervish dance outside the British Library. Different, absorbing and educational. One of the many events throughout the UK this year in which other cultures were put on show to the British public. This is one to help promote sacred ways, an exhibition tracing the artistic strands of the major faiths of Christianity, Islam and Judaism. This attempt at greater understanding is also a strong connecting theme in UK government policy, where throughout the year there was a genuine movement to improve relations between Whitehall and community in a bid to counter extremism. In November, Muslim scholars from all over the country met with government officials to regulate the conduct of Islamic community centres through a system of compliance codes, the aim outlined by Community Secretary Hazel Blears. We want to try and increase the resilience of communities to extremist messages um, and that's why we're particularly keen to work with young people uh, to make sure that women have a stronger voice. Um, but what is important is that if this is going to work, it has to be owned by the community and the enthusiasm and positive feeling that I've seen um, over the last few months I think is very encouraging. Similar and consistent signals throughout the year too from the Foreign and Commonwealth Office. A new Foreign Secretary, David Miliband, was keen to push his message about integration, a point he made at a reception celebrating it at the end of the fast of Ramadan. I think this is about people living out the common humanity that binds us together, whatever our race, our religion, uh, our creed, our colour. I think that the shared activities of daily life, whether at work or in sport or in the community, are the things that actually express that common humanity and uh, really it's about going about our lives in a way that uh, makes the most of our diversity rather than resenting it. He also spoke about global extremism and of the roles that citizens can play to combat this. No one can opt out of confronting the difficulties of religious extremism. No one can opt out of climate change. No one can opt out of the dangers of nuclear proliferation. And none of us should opt out of facing the challenge of global uh, inequality. And part of the purpose of today is to recognize a kind of paradox. Because on the one hand, we can't confront these challenges without recognizing the benefits that come from our diversity, both within our country and around the world. But at the same time, we've got to be honest that the diversity that we have can fragment and place challenges in front of us as we try to confront those challenges. And I think we should be honest about that. But I think we should also be uh, honest that the diversity that is represented in this room can only come together in a set of shared institutions and shared activities that allow us to show our common humanity. That community cohesion was a familiar theme from UK government throughout the year. The Minister for Olympics in London, Tessa Gell, took the message to a London Council's conference in October. The way in which we begin to drive the argument about community cohesion forward is to locate the self-interest, the way in which people's lives, the lives of their children, the lives of their families are better in qualitative and other terms because they belong to uh, a community which has its own internal sense of belonging and, uh, and cohesion. She felt it was vital to understand fears of difference between different people and to try and replace them with mutual respect. We start to build where fear of difference is replaced by this shared set of values. But that shared set of values can't be prescribed by government except the extent to which government will reflect social attitudes in legislation that will outlaw discrimination, will outlaw racial harassment, will outlaw racial bullying, and so forth. But those, uh, those values which provide the bedrock for social cohesion are most, um, are, are, are most robust where they emanate from uh, a consensus which reflects confidence in fairness. In the summer, former British Prime Minister Tony Blair hosted a major gathering of Muslim leaders and scholars. He wanted to make the point that strong religious faith 
must not be undermined by the actions of extremists. It is important to show that religious faith is not inconsistent with reason or progress or the celebration of diversity. Around the world today, along with the images of violence, are the patient good works of people of different faiths coming together, understanding each other, respecting each other. Religious faith has much to contribute to the public sphere, is still a thriving part of what makes a cohesive society, and is a crucial motivator of millions of citizens around the world. It is an essential, if non-governmental way, of helping to make communities work. To lose that contribution would not just be a pity, it would be a backward step. We, for our part, will be studying the outcomes of this conference with the keenest interest. We hope that the discussions over the next two days will produce ideas which we can explore and take forward, perhaps in partnership with some of you who are here today. We are especially interested to consider how the messages from this conference can best be conveyed down into the grassroots communities in this country. The best way for the UK communicating further abroad was the main theme of a British Council and Foreign and Commonwealth Office conference in December. Really what we were trying to explore was, was how we are going to communicate with uh, new populations, new people um, across the world in the future. And there are two things which are really important there. First of all, there's the questions of trust and the, 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 the issues of trust between the UK and other countries. And the other one is the new forms of communication, the Facebook and, the, uh, new, and uh, all those new uh, community groups that so many young people now use. We tend still to think about them as something which only uh, Western societies use. They're not. They're used right across the world. So really what we were saying is that um, to build trust, uh, between the UK and other countries, we've got to start having conversations with people. We've got to move from uh, a messaging of telling people about our particular views to ones which actually allow us to explore those views together. And we've got to do, do it using all the new technologies um, to break down this, this distrust that there is, um, but also to reach new people who perhaps have never had the opportunity to be part of that, that, that discussion. Also present at that conference, the FCO's Europe Minister, Jim Murphy. He spoke about the need for government to embrace new technology in this dialogue. As we look ahead to the challenges of the next decade, the opportunity of technology, the revolution in people's lives, in the opportunities for relations and communications between governments and between people, I think it's important that we together discuss what more can be done to modernise just the way in which we communicate and importantly, the way in which we listen to citizens all over the world and that's the purpose for me of being here today. The connectivity this year did not just centre on Arab and Islamic countries. Young people from all over Africa had the opportunity to meet in London in September to gain a greater understanding of global communities. The British Council has actually uh, developed a new program which is called Africa 2007, which is looking at identity, looking at culture, looking at the best way that Britain can actually work with uh, Africa uh, partners on, with, uh, with a mutual understanding that we are actually heading towards one common goal, bringing our young people uh, together to integrate and to share more ideas and to share good practices. And again, music and dance, a common bond behind a serious initiative, connecting with communities, a strong theme for 2007, and something that is sure to continue for many years to come.